Hey guys, and welcome to Vanguard Tactics. And if you're confused about what's going on with the new edition, which is coming out very, very soon for Warhammer 40K, then you are in the right place because we are absolutely dedicated to help you understand and get that clarity for all things 40K related. So in this video, we're gonna be covering unit coherency. Now, we're also gonna be covering with that casualties and how that's gonna influence your ability to move within coherency. But not only that, I just wanna say a huge thank you to the whole YouTube community that has helped us put this video together with some really great constructive criticism on previous videos where we can really make sure that we get absolutely everything spot on. Because at Vanguard Tactics, we pride ourselves on being the forefront of competitive 40K tactics strategies but also a great sportsmanship, which is why we've got the one and only 40K Academy called the Vanguard Tactics Academy. What that does is it goes over all of the phases of the game, modules and advanced game theory to help you become a better 40K player. We've currently got 150 students on there and I'm gonna be sharing with you some of the tactics that we go over. Now you may have seen the changes to unit coherency. Let's go over exactly what they mean and I'm gonna show you on the tabletop how they differ. So I would love you to do first of all is comment below with if this was something that you understood straight away or did it leave a little bit of confusion based on the previews that we've already seen. I'd love to know your initial thoughts. And also remember if you do like this content then please do subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time we release a new video. So in terms of unit coherency, the new ruling stipulates that if you have a unit of five or less models, then as long as each of those models are within two inches of another friendly model and five inches vertically, then they are deemed to be in unit coherency. You have to start the game in unit coherency. So when you deploy them, they need to be there. And when you move, you need to also stay in unit coherency. Now, in terms of casualties, what will happen is that if a, there is a coherency check, and this happens just before the morale phase, and basically what's gonna happen is that you're gonna lose a model for every single one that isn't in coherency at that time. Okay, so that's gonna be really, really important. And in another video, we're gonna look at how to remove models effectively so that you don't get caught out by this because otherwise, if you're moving, if you are removing the wrong models and incorrect models, then you might find yourself losing entire squads very, very quickly. And then basically until you end up with one single group of models that are still in coherency. So that's the new rules on that but there's one addition and slight change. Now, if you have a unit of six or more models, then each of those models have to then have two models within two inches and five inches vertically. So again, we're gonna show you exactly what that looks like on the table. We're gonna cover a five-man unit coherency. We're also gonna look at how that works with using large pieces of terrain. And then we're gonna cover some strategies, what you can start to put in place in combinations and ways to actually deploy your models in certain formations so you can leverage the most distance in width for that unit because board coverage is extremely important in competitive play. We want to be able to use use the width of our units to you know, string out as far as we can to either grab objectives, screen out from deep strike, protect our backfield, or you know, get buffs and abilities off our characters. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that. And we're also gonna go from the simplest way to deploy them to the most extreme ways with the least amount of risk to the highest amount of risk. And it is for you as a player to decide which one you want to use at the tabletop to maximize your strategy. Now, so let's jump over to the table and see what happens and what it actually looks like for unit coherency and also with casualties. So in this example, we're just gonna have a look at what the rule looks like for unit coherency when you only have one to five models in a unit. Obviously, this would only come into play if you've got multi-models for coherency, so it wouldn't affect a single model on their own. But when we're looking at a five-man unit here, then the maximum that you can be distanced from one another is two inches. So this is a two-inch measurer, and all you would do is simply ensure that each of these models are within two inches of another friendly model. Um, so for five models, that's really, really simple. This is what we're used to in eighth edition. So there's not really any change there. So as we mentioned earlier, there is two inches across and then five inches vertically. So let's take a look at unit coherency 
in and around a terrain feature. So what we've got here is obviously our first model down, uh, and this is for a unit of five. And remember, we can be two inches across and five inches up. So that model is just gonna go there for the sake of this demonstration. And then this terrain feature is four and a half inches to so that first level. But in order to get to the top level, it's around nine inches, which means that we're not going to be able to place a model there, even if he's within two inches across. So what's gonna actually have to happen is we need a model in between these layers. So again, you can measure two inches across, five inches up, and then same for this guy, two inches across, and five inches up. And now this unit is in coherency. So now you understand the basic concept of unit coherency. You need to ensure when you've got a five or up to five man unit, then you make sure that all of those models are constantly in coherency and they're also set up in coherency. And they need to make sure they're ending their move in coherency. Now, the thing is here when it comes to, this is the other part which is extremely important is casualty removing. Um, so now casualties are removed one at a time. And then there is a unit coherency check, which happens just before the morale phase. So in previous editions, you could remove that model. And then what you could do in your next turn is move back into coherency. Well, that might not be the case in ninth edition. So one thing that we're going to have to make sure that we do in order to maintain constant unit coherency is that we remove models from from the edge one at a time so we're ending with one single unit and single group of models that are all within unit coherency otherwise you're going to find yourself losing models at a very thick and fast rate this could be quite problematic when we start to look at in the next example units with six or more models so this is a typical unit coherency that we would see in 8th edition, but in 9th edition this is going to be no longer the case because now when you have a unit that contains six or more models, then all of a sudden the coherency rules change so that every model needs to have two models within two inches, not just the one. So for example, the guys in the middle here from this person to this person are all fine currently as it stands because they have a model to their left and a model to their right. So the guys on the end would have to go into triangles which is fine for spreading out your unit's coherency as far as you can, but can cause a slight problem when it comes to as soon as you lose a model. Okay, because what's gonna happen as soon as you lose a model, this one here, he's no longer in coherency, so you'd lose him. He's no longer in coherency, so you'd lose him. He's no longer in coherency, and nor is he, until you end up with a five-man unit. So that is gonna become extremely problematic for removing models very, very fast. However, in certain situations that can be quite useful and we're going to cover those shortly. So let's cover first of all the safest way to deploy our models whilst trying to maximize the distance between the first model and the last model because distance on the table is incredibly important whether you're trying to screen out, whether you're trying to move block, whether you're trying to grab objectives or get buffs from your characters. So now what you need to make sure is that you work and this is going to be the safest way in small triangles. Okay, so what you've got here is these three models are forming a triangle, and then he's two inches, two inches, two inches. The next model can be two inches, two inches, and two inches, and this is gonna continue the same in this pattern. Now, one thing you're gonna to have to make sure you do is actually measure the distance. It's no good just doing the diagonal. You need to measure both ways to check the coherency and having something like this little checker is very, very good and very quick and easy to make sure this is you're very fast and efficient with this. So now we've got that unit of 10 models and the maximum we can string out by is about that 12 to 13 inches across. So that's kind of what we're looking at for our maximum distance from A to B. And that's probably the safest way to deploy and move your models into coherency. The only thing you need to factor in is when you remove models, you need to ensure that you again, remove models from the edge at each time, maintaining these triangles so that each model has another model within two inches. If you remove the wrong model, all of a sudden you're gonna have some slight issues potentially, but still, even if you did remove that model, there's still one group and they, they still will have two models within two inches. So that's the safest way for deploying your models. 
So let's now look at another example, which is slightly less safe, but still could be quite usable. So in this example, what we've got here is a slight variation of the triangles, but now with a greater distance between them. And I'm gonna show you how this works. Now we're covering a 16 inch gap. Um, and again, on the smaller board size, actually if you had two units set up like this, you could screen out the board quite well um, from those deep strikes. Now, the thing with this is that, yes, there could be some potential for some issues with casualties. However, because this, in the way that we've deployed here, when you do suffer your first casualty, then if you take this model away, everybody else still has two models within two. So we can afford to lose one. We can also afford to lose a second model. Now, this now means we're down to an eight man unit for something like Coltis, Brood Brothers, Imperial Guard units, something that isn't really particularly valuable, but their point is literally hold the board, then you know we can actually afford to lose even one more model here because by the time we actually lose one more model, so let's say this one, then we're actually gonna end up in a situation where we're probably gonna fail a morale check. Our enemy would have had to invest in actually killing three models for, the, for this to even happen. We probably fail a morale check, so we might lose one to maybe two other models, but then we've now got one, two, three, four, five, six left, so even if um, we only lost one from morale, we're only ever giving away one free model because now the rest would then fall under the part of one group or within unit coherency because it's now a five man unit. So you're only ever gonna lose maybe one extra model practically and that's not too bad just to gain those extra two to three inches for screening out that board edge. So that's a little bit more tr tricky, um, but just one way to extend that out one step further. So let's show you an even more extreme is what you might look at. So this is our most extreme example where we're gonna suffer the most potential for losses from casualties, but give us the maximum amount of width for this unit. Um, whilst you know everyone is still in unit coherency, as we said at the start of this, within two, within two, within two. So we've got a triangle on each end. This does now give us a 19 inch board control, board presence. And then obviously what you would then do is add nine inches either side of that to block out that deep strike. So this is our most extreme of board presence. But obviously if you lose one single model, then you are gonna lose one, two, three, four more for free. But when we think about this, this could be something that we utilize if you fall under the following parameters. And that could be if your opponent doesn't have any shooting, so some armies like demons or something like blood angels, which might be a very heavily combat-based army or harlequins might not even be able to get the range to this unit that could be sitting on the backfield. Um, it could be a situation where maybe they're hidden out of line of sight from obscuring terrain and your opponent doesn't have any ability to shoot out of line of sight or any planes or anything. Um, or finally, you're just gonna push these guys forward to literally screen out from your opponent moving down and landing, whether you lose any models from the shooting phase, if you weren't too bothered by it, if it's simply to push out and screen out, then yeah, you might, you might wanna send one unit out at a time because either way, typically a unit of 10 Guardian are not gonna last very long anyway. So a unit like Coltis, Guardians, Dire Avengers, Rangers, anything like this, that's normally a fantastic screen, you're probably not gonna last very long anyway. If this was 10 intercessors, it might be a different situation, but it still has some merit. And as I said, high risk, but maybe potential reward, because now you can use your models to zone out more of that more important board for you. So this is another strategy where you could use unit coherency to maximize your damage output with not really worrying about the repercussions of what happens after. So this is a tactic that I would use in eighth edition a lot where I've got a unit of buffing characters um, or a group of buffing characters like Lamartes, Ashtraft, the Sanguinor. So just for the purposes of this, we've got a 10 man death company unit here. We've got five thunder hammers and the big threat is obviously the chaos knight. And if the death company can go in as a suicide unit, 
kill this knight, then I think it's a real fantastic win for the Blood Angel player. It's going to give them a lot more freedom in their movement in later turns. And then typically what we've got is we're trying to create as much distance between the characters and the combat. And we want to string out as far back as we possibly can in certain situations. Now, obviously, if we had more models and we were able to string them back like this to make those triangles, then that would be the ideal situation. But if your characters can only move so far and you maximize their movement to a certain point, then potentially stringing back to them is going to be really beneficial, even though you know you may even lose the rest of your unit through the, you know, not being in coherency. So what's going to happen here is we've obviously got this character. He's three inches away, but obviously he could even be six inches away because that's the buffing range of this character and maybe the fellow characters, but he's within three. And then obviously we've got a chain going out to the five Thunder Hammers. Now this is around 18 inches away, which is quite a good distance between the two. And what would happen here, the, hand, the Thunder Hammers would strike first and hopefully kill this knight with all the buffs from all the characters. They should do that quite efficiently. And if they do that, this is you know a huge win, for, like I said, for the Blood Angels, because they're gonna not only kill a unit much higher in their points, value but what this now enables you to do is then destroy this knight in your first charge phase and then potentially even consolidate and pile in and fight again into another unit okay because these guys are all in coherency and then what they would be able to do is pile in even further to then maybe make combat and fight again into another unit and still maintain that unit coherency and still then stay within six inches, providing we've got this triangle at the end, the guys in between. And if we then lose any models, it doesn't really matter if these guys die because now we're ending up with six models left all within unit coherency. Yes, they might have a morale issue, but you can always spend the CPs to stop that. But typically now it doesn't matter too much because the Thunder Hammers are still gonna do their job and make sure that they you know, pack the punch that they need to. So here we have another example of where you might find yourself in a situation where coherency could be a problem. Now what we've got is Lamartes giving the Death Company some sort of buff and perhaps the Death Company have wrapped this unit of Scions and maybe they declare their attack somewhere else, who knows what they wanna do, but the, basically the premise here is to wrap this Scion unit up and force them to spend two CPs to use the stratagem to fall and out of combat. And maybe if you've got a couple of wraps off, then they're gonna have to pick one unit that they can only do that with, because obviously you can only use that stratagem once per turn. But, and you can see that in another video, if you click above in that link, which is shown on screen now, but basically, um, what we can do here is if we lose any models from this squad, let's say the Sans fight back and kill a couple of models, what we've got is we're making sure that the Thunder Hammers alternate and the Thunder Hammers are the models that we really want to keep. In between those, we've got the Chainsword unit. So the Thunder Hammers are two inches apart from one another, and that's just going to make sure that if you could actually remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven models from this 12-man unit, then we're still all within coherency because that circle works perfectly. And then what we're getting then is maybe Lamartes or this character makes them fearless, or maybe you spend two CPs to auto pass that morale check, then they're still in unit coherency and you wouldn't have to lose any other models because each of these have two models within unit coherency. I hope you found those examples really helpful in your own games and remember, what I would advise you to do is simply start off with the safest option like I showed you first of all, using those small triangles. And then as you get more competent and depending on the situation you find yourself at the table, potentially use some of the more extreme examples. Now, again, it is gonna be a high risk, high reward to situation if you do go for that, but ultimately, hopefully that's given you some clarity and now confidence so you know you can stay within unit coherency at the table and also play a clean game where you're playing fairly. Now, one thing that you might be interested in is that on the launch and release of 9th edition, whenever that may come, we are gonna be putting together an entire video series and a video course completely for free called Learn to Play Warhammer 40K, 9th edition. 
So all you need to do in order to grab that, where we cover all the phases of the game, how to build a basic army list, and also some more advanced tactics, then the description is below. And all you need to do is head to that link and drop your email address in and you'll be signed up to our membership site where you can get access to that course. And finally, one last thing, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on that bell icon so that you get notified for every time we go live. And I will see you on another video. If you haven't already, make sure you check out the ones here and here. And that way, what you can do is catch up on the other videos that we've done around ninth edition. Take care.